is Labour MP Rosie Duffel, a woman who knows firsthand about the aggression of some trans activists. Good afternoon to you, Rosie. Hi, Julia. Thanks so much. Now, you face uh, issues within your own party, indeed, even uh, being, you know, trying to get you to, well, basically, you know, you're a woman, shut your mouth, stop saying things which uh, some people don't like, uh, even if they are you know, factually true. Um, first of all, just what do you make of the new hate crime law in Scotland? It came into force yesterday um, and it was support. It's not just the SNP, it was supported by Labour supported by the Greens and the Lib Dems, indeed, even a couple of uh, Tories as well. Um, and in terms of the impact it's going to have on freedom of speech. I think it's a really muddled law. I think people are really confused about whether or not they're going to be committing a hate crime. And I think in particular, like you've mentioned, and your T-shirt alludes to, um, this is about women not knowing if they are going to be even involved in this or accused of all kinds of things like misgendering. And obviously we need hate crime laws about, you know, things like Islamophobia, Islamophobia, racism, all the awful things that people can get away with. But but mostly they're legislated with, this, this just adds strength to kind of prosecuting those people. But if you're a woman who uses their instincts to ask a man to leave a women's bathroom, for example, are you then going to be accused of misgendering or a hate crime? Where does it stop? It's really unclear. That is the worry, isn't it? And by the way, for those who have just tuned in or you're listening, uh, as, as most of our audiences, um, my T-shirt, it's just a statement of fact. Woman, women is the plural. Uh, it's a noun and it says adult human female. I mean, that would mean I would know what a woman is. That is what we've always used uh, the word woman to use. Mm -hmm to mean uh, until uh, very recently where for some reason the elites decided that actually a woman was anyone who said they were a woman and uh, not an adult human female. Indeed, people have actually faced a question by the police even for this statement, a woman is an adult human female, therefore a trans woman is a man and not a woman. Um, but this is it. We, we, none of us is in favour of hate speech. I don't want people walking around going up to someone who is gay being homophobic or a woman being misogynistic or a black or an Asian person and being racist or, or a trans person and just going out of their way to be insulting Absolutely. and abusive. Yeah. But it's where we draw the line on these things, isn't it? Um, it's where the statements yeah. of fact, like a trans woman is a man, are, are, are deemed hateful because some people find it offensive. But but also even just the, the idea that, well, I think I think human beings, they love, but they also hate. And it's where you cross the line into being abusive or where you cross the line mm. into being threatening or inciting uh, violence against someone. But should we have our speech controlled to that extent? I don't think so. And the, as I understand it, the police got two hours training on how to sort of implement this law and how to an analyse whether people are breaking it or not. And it took three years to come to pass. So it's just been done in a really bizarre kind of Mickey Mouse way. And the fact that women are not included in the list of protected characteristics who could be on the receiving end of a hate crime makes it even more confusing. And the Scottish government said, yes, but we're doing that separately. But when? It took yeah. three years to get this sort of confusing law through. So when is that going to be made? Yeah. It, it, nobody really understands it, I don't well, think. Whereas we always have protected characteristics since we brought in discrimination yeah. laws, you know, sex, i.e., you know, against women or men or, or race or religion or disability, uh, and sexuality. And again, I, the vast, vast majority of people in this country would stand by that. Um, but the yeah. key thing here is also it does affect people in England as well as people in Scotland or anyone, any yes. constituent part of the UK. This law, anybody could say, I mean, I saw this tweet or this interview or I know this woman's t-shirt on telly in Scotland uh, either online or TV or radio or news in print and I'm offended or I think someone else might be offended you don't even need to yeah. and then the police could investigate we've had confirmation have we not from a, uh, a Scottish SNP minister that the sort of thing that you know JK Rowling in particular tweets could be deemed something that was worthy of a police investigation now whether it ended in a uh, the foolishness of her being charged with a crime, whether it ended with her having a non-crime hate incident recorded against her, both of these would be risible. But let's just go through what she said, because J.K. Rowling tweeted yesterday, April the 1st, the day this law came in. Also, April Fool's Day, rather amusingly. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, she tweeted uh, pictures of 10 high-profile trans people, including sex offenders, uh, ridiculed their yeah. claims to be women, uh, including double rapist Isla Bryson, who she referred to as a lovely Scottish lass. 
Now, she was just basically <laughs> at the end of it, said, ha ha, April Fool, of course these people aren't women, they are men. And then she basically used the hashtag, arrest me, and basically said, you know, I'm abroad at the moment, but when I return, I look forward you know, to the Scottish police questioning me and arresting me. Um, the reality is, this does happen to women and yeah. men who say this. Do you think it will happen in JK's case, or do you think that... It's entirely possible. She's making a joke about it there, just to highlight the ridiculousness of this really confusing law, where nobody really knows when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, whether the tweets that we like uh, are deemed crimes. And there's this um, added sort of weirdness where you can report these crimes anonymously in a salmon farm or a sex shop or a mushroom farm or something like that. And yes, you should be able to report them anonymously, but how anonymous is it if you go to your local salmon farm and tell the people selling salmon that you've had it? I mean, it's all, it's, it's come beyond satire, yeah. really. I mean, again, yeah, you know, there are hubs where people can go, they really want to encourage it. But you also touched on people, you know, accidentally breaking the law, not meaning to, to yeah. cause offence, although some of us are quite happy to cause offence. I think, I don't think you have a right not to be offended. Um, but, but we mm -hmm. have had, you know, the absurd situation where the Scottish uh, police, you know, put out, you know, videos and advice saying, you know, you might accidentally, you might unknowingly <laughs> be breaking the law, unwittingly, but, you know, but also this affects people in their own homes. Your kids could knock yeah. on you and say, oh, you know, mum, mum didn't let me stay out late on a Friday night or I've got my pocket money docked. Oh, by the way, my mum also said this about, you know, trans person or a black person. Now, that is, again, we are, when we say the phrase Orwellian, you know, it's overused, but that seriously is Orwellian. I think this is what happens when you make legislation kind of on the, on the hoof like this, just from social media. And I think we're seeing that happen quite a little bit at the moment. Um, it happened in um, the English Parliament the other day when we were talking about conversion therapy. Yeah. It was obvious that so few people actually understood what was involved in the law and whether or not we should make it a law to outlaw something that was already illegal and that it would be a catch-all law where speech and even the sort of desire to get therapy and talk about issues and as you said discuss it in families could then be deemed illegal so this it, it's just it's it's kind of law by children almost it's not thought through it's not proper yep. grown-up and serious legislation and, and yet, i think that's the bigger point for me and yet labor msps in holyrood they voted to support this along with lib dems and greens and indeed a couple of the tories as well we've had um keir starmer sort of i don't know well representatives today the ministers out on the round sort of sort of backtracking a bit on this and not supporting this, but we know this one mm. of the threats from a Labour government is that there would be these extension of the hate crime laws. Is there a is there a rift between the Scottish Labour Party and the Westminster Labour Party on this? Or does actually the Labour Party, and you've experienced this with, with, with your hounding that you've you've had and you've not been protected by the Labour leadership, are they fully signed up to this? I've no idea, Julia. I'm not party to these insider conversations. And to be frank, as a backbencher, I've no idea who decides these things. I just read them in the paper or hear a senior shadow minister announce that we're not, like last summer, that we're not going to introduce self-ID. And then I kind of read all the articles and, it's, you know, they don't speak to me about it. But um, it does seem that whatever laws we decide or put in our manifesto, probably the Scottish Labour Party will follow on from that rather than the other way around. But but yeah, you're right. I mean, what happens in Scotland probably will filter down to us if we're not watching very carefully. No, indeed. Uh, but we are watching very carefully. JK really happy to go to mm. prison on this issue. I know I am. I've said my husband would be like, things you're willing to lose your job for, go to prison for. And you know, you know what? The the, the ability, the right to speak facts, to state absolutely incontrovertible truths. Um, it's not a yeah. protected belief that trans women uh, are, are, are men. It is, it is a simple matter of biological fact. It's not hateful. It's not, I, that's something I'm, I'd be delighted and thrilled to share a prison cell with JK Rowling and indeed your good Me self. Me too. Do you, look, yeah, you look forward <laughs> to joining us. I think, I think women's snacks. prisons are going to be a, quite a good fun place to be for a while. Yeah, why not? I mean, it is very serious though, Julia. We yeah. make jokes about it, but we're speaking for women who risk losing their jobs, who yeah. can't afford to, and we've got a platform and we are very privileged compared to most people. But the amount of women that sidle up to me and tell me that they support me, but they're too scared to do so in public, yeah. 
is just, you know, and as an MP, I'm connected with ordinary people every single day. We get several hundred emails a week. And I know that the majority of certainly this country support the fact that if you want to call out a man in a woman's space, you should be able to do so. Absolutely. Well, all power to you. But thank you very much indeed, uh, Labour MP Rosie Duffield. Um, just a quick word uh, from uh, Tom Slater, who's joining us in here. I mean, this is the thing, and we discussed this a little bit earlier on the show, uh, you know, J.K. Rowling, she's a multi-millionaire, very powerful, very, uh, uh, you know, celebrated figure. She's been something of a hero. When she does this, it goes to the front page of the papers, and we discuss it on the TV and the radio. But actually... <laughs> Thousands upon thousands of, of men and women are, are, are finding themselves cancelled, censored, losing their jobs, being threatened with losing their jobs for saying exactly the same stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and indeed millions more feeling, I don't want to say anything because I can't afford to lose my job. Absolutely. And it's those people who are hit the hardest by this, but those are the people, those are the cases of censorship and cancellation that you never hear about because they're not seen as newsworthy. So that's why it's absolutely right that, and absolutely laudatory that someone like J.K. Rowling is taking this stand when she really doesn't have to. Mm. It's because, in fact, it's not really about her. It's about the people much further down the, the pecking order, as it were, financially, who wouldn't be able to defend themselves against it. Yeah. might not even know the tripwires... Although you can off. join the Free Speech Union. <laughs> I'm a member of the Free Speech Union. I just, I honestly, they've set up an office in Edinburgh to be able to handle what they mm -hmm. believe will be a deluge of cases. It's going to be fascinating to watch, isn't it? Well, look, I've been asking you to get in touch all day. Tell me whether you think you agree, well, you agree with J.K. Rowling or you don't agree with her on her stance on this and indeed my stance and that of, uh, of Rosie Duffield and indeed Tom. Ah, pretty well, same people thinking alike. Who knew? 